Welcome to Demystifying the Metaphysical, here to help you find more compassion in your life. Today we're going to discuss the 15 palmistry must-knows before you begin reading the lines on your palms. We first need to understand the canvas or background to which the lines of your hands are painted on. These 15 must-knows could modify, confirm, or counter what the lines on your palms say about you and help you better understand yourself and others. Some of the questions the 15 characteristics will answer are, am I particular? Do I need freedom? Do people find me cold? Am I lazy? Do I overindulge? Am I stubborn? Do I use my heart or head more? Stay till the end for a recap with the answers to these questions. As we start discussing whether a feature is long or short, straight or curved, or hard or soft. Keep in mind that there are varying degrees with every aspect of the hand, and the key is to see what stands out the most and which characteristics is more predominant in the hand. Before we go into the 15 characteristics, a question people often ask is, should I be looking at my right or left hand? The answer is both. Your dominant hand, usually the hand you write with, tells us your present situation, your attitude towards life, and it's the self that you show to the world. While your non-dominant hand shows the characteristics you were born with, how you felt about your past experiences or your inner world. Starting with number one, the way we carry our hands. Says a lot about our attitude towards life. When the hand is dangling open in a limp manner, the person could be indecisive and lack direction. When it's slightly open with the fingers curled in a bit, this person is open, friendly, and approachable. When the hand is closed and clenched up into a fist, the person is determined and could be stubborn. Moving on to number two. So just how refined are you? All kidding aside, the best way to tell how refined or sensitive you are is to look at your skin texture. The best place to look at is the back of your hand. If the skin is smooth and the cells of the skins are small and close together, like the hand on the left, this is considered a fine texture. If the cells are big and further apart and the skin is rough, this is considered coarse. One thing to keep in mind is that as we age, our skin becomes less elastic and smooth. So the smoother and finer the skin, the more sensitive and graceful the person will be. And the rougher and more coarse the skin, the better the person can handle the ups and downs of life. Number three, consistency or the elasticity of the hands can range from being so soft that when the hand is squeezed, it feels like the bones will come through the skin. On the opposite end, a hard hand feels like you're squeezing a piece of wood. It feels like there's no give or elasticity in the hand. The softer the hand, the more the person will prefer to have it easy in life, both mentally and physically. A person with an elastic hand, which is the medium consistency, has an active mind and are productive in life. And a hard hand shows stubbornness, someone who is set in their ways. Number four, flexibility of the palm and fingers. The best way to assess whether a hand is flexible is by bending the fingers backwards to see if it is supple. Note that both hands can have different flexibilities. If the right hand is more flexible than the left, it means the person has become more adaptable over time. Having a medium flexible hand can mean the person is determined, but if the hand is so stiff that the fingers don't bend back at all without hurting the person, then the person will likely be quite stubborn. Now let's take a look at how a flexible finger looks like. Notice how the top joints of these fingers bend backwards slightly. When the top joint is flexible, it means the person is mentally agile. As we'll see later, the top joints of the fingers rules the mental world. Number five, the color of the hands. 
When looking at the color of the hands, keep in mind the time of year, as during the summer the hands might be more tan than in the winter time. If the hand is tan, looking at the palm would give you a more accurate reading. When the hand is white, not from natural whiteness of a person's skin, like the hand on the right, but when it looks pale, like there's no blood circulating through it, like the hand on the left, this person's very dreamy, mystical, unemotional, and lacks enthusiasm for life. Pink is the color most commonly seen. This person has energy, is optimistic and warm. They're full of vitality, especially if the person also has a hand with an elastic consistency. A red hand is not the same as a deep pink hand. Red hands are the color of pomegranates. These people are intense, very passionate, and have great physical strength. They're often very straightforward, and when angry, they can have a hard time controlling their temper. Yellowish hands, again, not from a person's natural skin tone, can mean the person can be moody, pessimistic, introverted, or mysterious. Number six, hair on the hands. Points to stamina, physical strength, and someone who is more rough around the edges. The roughness could be offset if the texture of the skin is fine. Number seven, the hand as a whole. There are four hand types. Click the link on the top right for the video to determine your hand type and to learn about the characteristics of each type. Square palms of the earth and air hand add logic, while the rectangular or oblong palms means the fire and water types are more emotional. Short fingers on the earth and fire hand adds intuitiveness and impatience, while long fingers means the air and water types are more detail oriented and need time to think things through. Now looking at the three sections of the fingers and the hand as a whole, we can determine which of the three worlds we're most comfortable functioning in. Is it the mental, practical, or physical world? If the top joints of your fingers are most developed, meaning it's the longest and the thickest, then you're more in the mental world. You might like to daydream or come up with big ideas. If the middle section of your fingers is the most developed, then you're more practical. Your ideas are more realistic, so you're more likely to bring them to fruition. If the third or base joint is the most developed, then you live in the physical world where sensual pleasures are most important to you. You most likely really enjoy getting a massage, eating a good meal, or being physically active. Applying the same idea to the hand as a whole, if your fingers are the most developed, then you live in the mental world. If the middle section of your hand is most developed, then you're in the practical world. And if the base of your hand is most developed, you prefer the physical world. So which section of your fingers and hands are the most developed? And are they both pointing to the same world or do you have the influence of two worlds in your hands? Number eight, straight versus curved features on the palms, fingertips, and lines on the hands. Let's start with the palm. The outer edge of the palm under the little finger is called the percussion. This side of the hand is especially important when it comes to determining someone's creativity. Looking at the hand on the right, notice how curvy the lines of the palms are compared to the edges on the hand on the left, which has very straight edges and sharp corners. In general, when you see straight lines, it means the person is influenced by reason and logic, while curvy lines adds to a person's intuition and creativity. The same concept can be applied to the fingertips. The hand on the left has square tips as they're somewhat leveled at the tip, while the hand on the right has conic or rounded tips, making it a bit more creative and intuitive. But notice how the percussions on both hands are very straight, meaning both people aren't interested in being creative. That's probably a more accurate observation for the hand on the left since the fingertips are squared, adding to the straightness of the hands.
Applying the same idea to the lines on the hands, we'll take a look at the headline highlighted in purple. Looking at the hand on the left, a person with a straight and long headline that ends underneath the little finger are logical thinkers that are good in math and the sciences. Turning to the hand on the right, we see a long curved headline that ends on the Mount of Luna. This means that the person has vi a vivid imagination. Click on the link on the top right to learn more about the secrets the mounts on your hands reveal. Number nine, the size of the hands. When determining the size of a person's hands, it's relative to the size of their body. It's been said that people with small hands like big challenges, while people with big hands prefer to focus on intricate details like making jewelry. Number 10, the thickness of the hands. People with thick fleshy hands, like the one on the right, are more sensual and earthy. They enjoy the physical pleasures in life and may be fond of luxuries. Number 11, do you use your conscious or subconscious mind more? Looking at the two sides of your hands, splitting down the middle between the middle and ring finger, you can see that the conscious side of this hand is more developed. This is common as the mount of Venus on most hands is more developed than other mounts on the hand. Number 12, which quadrant of your hand is most developed and what does it mean? Splitting the hand into four sections, vertically between the middle and ring finger and horizontally across from where the thumb connects to the palm. We have the four quadrants. Look to see if any of the quadrants is more or less developed than others. If your mental rational quadrant is most developed, you are goal oriented and ambitious. If this section is less developed than other sections, you could lack confidence. Having an index finger that is longer than your ring finger could counter this. Check out the video link on the top right for the video on what your fingers say about you. If your physical practical quadrant is the most developed, you have excess energy, great physical stamina, and possibly a strong sexual appetite. If this quadrant is not developed, the person could lack energy and enthusiasm. If your mental and instinctive quadrant is most developed, you're interested in creative expressions, learning, and may be less interested in material matters. If your physical intuitive quadrant is most developed, you're imaginative, creative, intuitive, and empathetic. If this quadrant isn't developed, you like to take a logical and rational approach to life. If all quadrants look pretty balanced, like this hand, then you are a well-balanced person. Here's an example of a hand where the physical practical quadrant is the most developed meaning this person has abundant energy for physical activities. Number 13, even or uneven knuckles. When your hand is clenched into a fist, look at how the knuckles on your hand lines up. If it's pretty even and smooth like this hand, then you'll be meticulous about your appearance and particular about your environment. If the knuckles are uneven, likely with the middle finger knuckle sticking out much more than the other knuckles, you'll have a more relaxed approach to life. Number 14, gaps between the fingers. There are three places to look for gaps between the fingers. First is the gap between the middle and index finger. If you have a gap here, you are an independent thinker and ambitious. If the gap is smaller than the spacing between your other fingers, then you probably don't like to take the lead or be in the spotlight. The second gap is between the middle and ring finger. If you have a gap here, you're probably pretty private, resourceful, and self-dependent. If you don't have this gap, then you like to be in the company of your loved ones. The third gap is between the ring and the little finger. If you have this gap, you need a lot of freedom. If you don't have this gap, then you probably dislike change and often turn to your friends for support. Number 15, the broadness of the palm. Can you tell the difference between these two palms? 
On this hand, the palm is wider across the top edge compared to the base of the palm. People with this type of palm are thinkers. They prefer mental activities like crossword puzzles. This palm is the exact opposite, where the base of the palm is broader than the top of the palm. People with this kind of palm prefer physical activities like sports. Now for the moment of truth. Let's revisit the questions we started the video with and see if you caught all the answers along the way. Am I particular? You could be if your knuckles are even like this. Then you're more likely to be particular about the way you dress and or about the way things are decorated in your environment. Do I need freedom? Yes, you do. If there's a gap between your little finger and ring finger. The bigger the gap, the more likely you'll need freedom. Do people find me cold? They could if your hands are pale white like this, looking like it's not getting enough blood supply. Am I lazy? You could be if you have very soft hands that don't bounce back when squeezed. Instead, it feels like the bones will come through. Do I overindulge? You could if your palms are as red as pomegranates, and you're more likely to overindulge if you also have a huge amount of Venus. Am I stubborn? You could be if you find it hard to bend your fingers backwards. Do I use my heart or head more? Do you have more straight lines than curvy lines on your hands? Is your palm broader at the top than the bottom? Are your fingers the most developed on your hand? If so, then you use your head more than your heart. But if you have more curvy than straight lines on the hands, your palm is rectangular or oblong shaped, or your palms are red, then you use your heart more than your head. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to share, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.